Good morning friends. Welcome to GoOnlineTrainings.com. Today we are going to learn how to create SSAS project and source and data source view and building dimensions and cube and using that you know perform calculations and deploy cube to the SSAS server. And in this we have some more advanced concepts. We have partitions, segregations, translations, perspectives and actions and security. And with the help of aggregations and partitions, uh, we should be able to increase the performance of the cube. Translation is going to give you different languages. Perspective means some kind of a views of a SQL Server. And security and actions also we're going to dis you know or discuss. <clears throat> now, already we have built the data warehouse with the help of OLTP data. Once the data warehouse is ready, you have to create a cube okay so before creating a cube what are the steps we have to have let us understand if you want to create a cube the step number one is that we have to create SSAS project and let me go here and open you know all programs we have to go to SQL Server uh, I think I have in 2012 I have this and SQL Server 2012 or 2014 whatever you have installed and go to file new project so you have to choose analysis services multi-dimensional model and you have analysis services tabular model uh, tabular model is completely ram based when you have a small data and which can be occupied in the ram and which will give you you know uh, less segregations but more fast is this but multi-dimensional database is completely ROM based architecture. That means hard disk based architecture. If you wanted to perform all permutations and combinations of the, you know, or aggregations and all, if you wanted to perform and you can use this, but it's a hard disk based and bit slow, but you will, yeah, when you have large data, we can go in for this. So click on this and you can uh, say that the project name SSAS, say products for amazon.com let us use like this okay and choose the the path and click on okay so you have created a project okay creating a project is very easy then you have to create a data source so as we discussed what is a data source for the cube if you wanted to create a data source you have to use the data warehouse because you need the dimensional table and the fact table using that you should be able to work on this cube so let me go to the data source and when we go here when you go to solution explorer we have a data source right click on this new data source and click next and if you have something you can delete and create the new one so server name you have to provide here server name is dot and the database name is the data warehouse database. I have one data warehouse in this and the Microsoft is also given one more, you know, data warehouse sample database for us, AdventureWorks DW2012 or 2008 art. You can choose any one of them, but let us, you know, use arts and click on OK and click next. And we have to create, you know, a service account. We have to use it here. And other way, if you have any other account that you can use domain account and your password. So the data source will be able to go to this database. So product DW database with the help of, you know, this account and it's able to get the data. So click on use a service account and this service account is, you know, uh, will be used to go to the SQL server and get the data. So click next and uh, the name is data source say products okay now click finish and if you want to modify tomorrow just click on this and click on edit you should be able to modify the server names and the database names you can also test connection if you want to and uh, you know go to go to the impersonation information where you should be able to change your service accounts to read this database right so Click on OK. Now the step number three is that then once you create a data source, we have to create a data source view. So let us go 
there and create a data source view. So go here and add new data source view and click next. I'm using the existing data source and click next. And why we have to use a data source view is the next, you know, one question people may ask you. So the thing is that you can do lots of, uh, you know, you can filter the tables. For example, the data warehouse is having lots of tables and I wanted to filter only few tables here. Definitely you should be able to go to the data source view and filter the tables. For example, I have thousands of tables here. So let me choose only few tables, but unfortunately I don't have many tables here. But when you wanted to filter some tables, you can use the data source view. Otherwise, when you have only the data source, when you create a cube, cube is going to get all the data and it's going to create. So data source view is some kind of a intermediate uh, you know, place where you should be able to get whatever you wanted to get. So if you have thousands of tables, you can filter you know, some tables and you can do it, okay? So for example, let me add fact tables and when you have fact sales and you click on this and choose add related tables so you will get all the related tables only thing is that you have to know what is the fact table if you have thousands of table just do the fact table and click on the fact and choose add related tables and you will be able to get those related tables and click next okay and this is a dsv products all right so click on finish now dsv you will be able to get same you know diagram however you're having it here so uh, however you're having in the data warehouse same kind of an architecture is going to show you but what are the other things we can do in it in in this so as we discussed already let me have so when you have oltp and when you have a data warehouse and from the data warehouse, we're creating a big project here that is a cube project, right? So when you take this data and modify the data, you have to understand how the data is going and why we are doing it here. Let us understand. So this is your OLTP data. The data has been moved to data warehouse and this is your data warehouse. And this is what is SSAS project we are creating. and Inside the SSAS project, you're going to create a uh, three things here. So that's what we have to understand. One is that you have to create a data source connection details. And later, using a data source, what we can do is that you can create one DSP, data source one. So this is, and you can also create one more data source two. So one project can have many data source views so let me take this is the one and this is the dsv for example one and this is dsv2 why dsvs are important if you wanted to customize something you think we have some thousand dimension tables here and let us say 20 factor tables are there but out of you know thousand dimension tables i wanted to get only the 10 dimension tables and the plus one fact table and this data related to let us understand a uh, loans data so if you wanted to create some kind of a loans in a cube you have to get only related to those you know of uh, tables and have and based on this what you can do is that you should be able to create a cube okay so let me create a cube on this so one project can have multiple data sources and one project also can have multiple cubes. So we had created in the last project, we had approximately some five terabytes of data, but uh, we had created 40 plus cubes there. So the data warehouse size was very small. We had approximately, you know, two terabytes of data. Okay, as of now, but we were doing, you know, lots of one, only one project we have in, inside that we are creating inventory data, loans data, so sales data, HR data, employee data. So like that, we are able to create lots of DSVs. Using that, we were able to create lot many cubes here. So this is what is the important thing, thing that you can understand. So if you wanted to customize something, definitely I cannot go to data warehouse and ask because as a developer tomorrow, 
when you ask the production people, production will have the data warehouse and everything, and they are the centralized hub for the data. So you never, never think that this data is not only for you. This data is meant for the other people also, right? So the data warehouse is data. It is not only for us, right? So this is a centralized hub. So this data, other applications also may use. So definitely, when you say, I need some data for this, people will say no for this. Because not only you, others say some 5,000 5, applications in your company are using this data because it is a centralized hub. One of the application is your application. So one more thing, this data, you cannot go to the data warehouse and this will be maintained by the DBAs. Okay, and OLTP also maintained by the DBAs. And this is where you're a developer, you're creating a project. Okay, so when you create a project, so if you wanted to have something here and you cannot change anything here. For example, I wanted to have first name, middle name, last name, date, and here I wanted to combine as a full name. So that you cannot ask the DBA to combine all the columns and give me the data. Are you getting the point here? So, or if you have, uh, you know, uh, addresses there, so I wanted to get only the city from the address column, but they have stored address as a full address here. So if you wanted to do any customization further, first name, middle name, last name is here, and here I wanted to have full name, or I have something else, and from that I wanted to derive a new column, definitely you cannot ask data warehouse guys, and data warehouse is in as of, uh, you know, as of now, you will be able to get read-only permissions on this. So you will not be able to, you know, modify anything as of now. And, you know, you have to think like this. So data source and data source view, as I told you, so data warehouse is just like a centralized hub. You get something from using a data source and from to, you know, DSV, and you, sh you should be able to modify. For example, when you go for a dinner party, there is a buffet, right? So you have lots of dishes are there, lots of items are there. So you have to take, you know, some of the items to your dish and you should be able to modify that however you need. For example, you wanted to add some vinegar, you wanted to add some, you know, uh, some lime, or you wanted to add some salt to the dish. So whenever you do any modification to this, and that is not going to affect, but end of the day, using this, you should be able to you know, enjoy your mail. So that's what. So you get the data. If you wanted to have some kind of a modifications, the centralized place you will not be able to modify because this is for not only for you, right? The buffet, buffet, the all, you know, people who are invited for the party is going to use. So it is completely on all kind of varieties of dishes are there, but you can choose, I, I need dish number one, dish number two, dish number three. And the second guy may use dish number two, dish number five, and dish number seven. And they will be modifying whatever they need in their plate. So DSV is just like a plate, and you will be able to get the data and do the some kind of a modifications locally to the data and the data you should be able to give. What kind of a modification just now I, I told you, you should be able to filter columns, filter tables and filter columns also if you wanted to. Okay, so I don't need all the things let me have filter tables or I wanted to create a new relationship. Okay, so new relationships or I wanted to derive create a new columns. Just now I told you, I wanted to have full name, but I had a first name, last name, and or if you wanted to add or, you know, delete tables from uh, from the queue. For example, you have added a 10, 10 dimension tables, but you wanted to delete one, or tomorrow if you wanted to add one, so everything you're doing it here because this is a project, so whatever you wanted to perform, so everything you should be able to perform in your module only because this is something different and this is something different. So this is where you have to understand. So data source view is some kind of a provision for the SSAS developers. Uh, get the data, modify the data, then use the data. When you modify the data here, it is not going to affect the data warehouse. So from the buffet, when you get the food in your plate and if you do some kind of a customization here, and definitely that customization is not going to affect the centralized, you know, the food counters, remember that. So the data source of views are very, very important. You can do a lot many things here. So what are the things we're going to do? 
and can filter tables, can modify and derive new columns, can create new relationships. And one data source can have multiple DSVs, data source views. If you wanted to create a, a, a derived column, for example, I wanted to use an employee table or a customer table and choose new derived column calculation. And I, I would like to create a full name with the help of first name, middle name, and last name. So A is null first name. However, you're writing in the SQL server, the same expressions you have to use. So, <clears throat> and save the data. So let me go to the data source view. And here, what all we can do. So this is a data source we had discussed already. And this is a data source view. And right click on this and explore data. You should be able to explore the data just like that. And uh, Exploring means just viewing the data. Right click on this, explore the data. So whether every table has data or not, right click on this, explore data. So the first one is that a new name with calculation. This is where you should be able to get lot many, you know, or derived columns or, you know, new columns you can create. For example, I wanted to create a uh, dim timetable I have and I would like to have a new name in calculation yesterday uh, we also created but i'm repeating the same story today so let me have i have a dim timetable today i wanted to you know write some kind of a new expressions here so let me take this so dim timetable i would like to have it today and what i'm going to do is that i wanted to prefix the quarter number in front of three q q3 and in front of this i would like to you know uh, put sem number sem2 sem3 not simply two three like this i wanted to prefix the letters so if you wanted to prefix the letters uh, uh you know uh, so quarter number when you read this data you will get the quarter number but i would like to prefix a q right if you wanted to prefix a q you have to put like this and when you put like this, it's going to give you an error because this is an integer, this is a string, this you have to convert cast and you have to say quarter number as where cat. So these are the SQL expressions and we have to say new quarter number. So something like this, you can create a derived column so this is a completed column in sql server okay and if you want to apply the same thing for the, this one also so same thing we have to copy and paste and we're doing it here okay so when you do something here the original table is not going to affect so let me put like this the original table is when you re remove this okay so this is my original table so the original table you're going you're not going to have this because derived column computed column means it will get the data at the time of showing you results it's going to show you the actual table is not going to be affected so let me put the semester here and you can have a semester number and here new semester number like that you can have any kind of a thing uh, any table you can take i have taken one table like that you can have so if you need for the week number also and let me take uh, for the week number also i would like to put w and here i am planning to put week and this is new week number like that i have created new quarter number new semester number new week number so like that you can create all these expressions and this is the alias okay so how is that you should be able to create the you know the new columns which are not there in the data warehouse so you can just go here new name it calculation the expression would be your alias so take this alias and you have to copy and you have to paste and this is the expression you're going to use and you have to copy this and you have to paste that's it and click on okay you're able to create this and if you wanted to delete right click on this and you should be able to delete you know the columns also 
and let us explode the data. So like that, if you wanted to create a full name or if you wanted to, you know, you have a full name that you wanted to, uh, you know, split into multiple names, everything you should be able to do it. So new name it calculations. So let me have one more thing here. So new semester number, I'm going to use all of them. So I'm creating. So click like this and copy and paste and it is also created. The next one is new week number. I'm going to copy and create one more thing and new name it calculation. It is new week number. And before, you know, uh, writing there, you have to execute everything here and check whether everything is perfectly working or not. So otherwise, you're going to get lots of issues here. Now, we have created everything perfectly fine and let us explore the data so like that if you wanted to have some new columns and everything you should be able to do with the help of dsv or i wanted to delete this relationship delete this or if you wanted to establish a new relationships or sometimes what's going to happen your data warehouse may not have appropriate relationships for example when you go to the data warehouse and database diagrams so let me create a diagram so when you create a diagram you'd understand that what are the you know, relationships and, you know, what are the tables we have. Okay. So when you go here, you have already appropriate, you know, dimensions you have and everything is linked properly. If any dimension is not linked properly or any table is not linked properly at the database level. So you have to go to here and right click on this new database diagram. You have to choose the tables which you wanted to check whether these tables are having relationships or not. Okay, so everything is having proper relationships, proper data warehouse means and you will get proper, you know, uh, data source view. If the data source view is proper and you should be able to create your cubes properly. So if the proper, you know, if you do, if you don't have proper relationships here and you can also take a product key and link it to this and it will give you this kind of a wizard and say yes and you should be able to also <clears throat> Uh, create the relationships and all from here. So it has given you this is a primary key. So when I change it this, but I don't want to change. Uh, I would I don't want to create a primary key here. So remove this and let me create delete logical primary. It has created a primary key. So this is a primary key. So let me take this and link like this and it is like this. This is not a primary key. Okay. So you can do lots of things over there. And if you wanted to add a new name it query name it query means some kind of a you know a, a query you can write you should be able to get the data and put the data here for example i have a table there employee table i wanted to get only two columns from the employee table get okay and list you know put it here so like that name it query is nothing but some kind of a view in sql server and you can add remove tables for example i wanted to delete this table and delete from this or i would like to add a new table tomorrow what is going to happen the data warehouse may have as of you know one two three four five tables we have so one more table got added here this you wanted to add to the cube so when you wanted to add to the cube first we have to come to the data source view and you should be able to do it okay so all these things you should be able to do so new relationships you can have. You can also find tables. For example, when you have thousands of tables here, I wanted to file whether you know uh, some table is available or not. For example, dim timetable is there or not you wanted to find out. So click on like this. If it is there, it'll, it's going to give you. Or I would like to know whether dim date table is there or not. So it is not there. like that. When you have thousands of tables in the data source view, and sometimes you wanted to know a uh, given table is available in this or not if it is not there you have to click here and add the table to this and you have to uh, properly link a connection to the fact table and do lots of things here. so when you right click on this you will get some, like you know some menu when you right click on this you will get you know some things exploring data is one of the good menu you should be able to use that so once you create a data source view in you know uh, what are we are able to do in the data source view explore data new relationship new name and calculations replace table and delete tables and all we're able to do the next step is that we should be able to perform by building a cube okay this is the simplest way to create a cube 
so how to build the cube go go to the you know uh, here and the next one is that let me go here and create a cube when you create a cube automatically dimensions also built or you can also create a dimensions and build the cube so this is the simplest way let us use that right click on this use new cube and click next when you go here use existing tables or create an empty cube or generate tables in the data source use existing tables and these are the select measure group tables and what is the fact table it is asking you but if you need the suggestion it may confuse you or oh, it did not confuse but sometimes whenever you get many numbers in any 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 table that's it is going to give you for example many times it's going to give you this as a fact table some but you have to be very clear never ask any suggestion you know that fact sales table would be your measure group table and click next and it is telling quantity sold is a measure sales amount is a measure already we know but fact sales count sales count means i wanted to know how you know how many people have how many customers are bought the products in last month you know uh, what are the location uh, you know in uh, what are the categories of the products they have bought it so if you wanted to have some kind of a count the ssas automatically will add but you know fortunately unfortunately we don't have in the fact sales let me take the fact sales table we don't have that count here so we have the key and this is also key this is also key and this is also key and we are having this is also key we are having quantity sold sales amount there is no count here but automatically it is going to have this if you don't need any measure minimum one measure i need and you can uncheck this so but i you will not be able to perform any aggregations on this so let us use so this will be added by ssas click next so select the dimension so it is saying we have a dim time and a dim customer dim location and we have a dim product if you if you don't need some kind of a dimensions uncheck this minimum i need one fact table and one dimension table to perform analysis you can choose whatever the tables you need or simply put all these dimensions and click next okay this is say your products pro you know uh, amazon let us put some amazon products cube okay we have created so cube is going to have your measure group tables and your dimension tables that so cube is going to take completely the structure of the data source view however the data source view is there it is going to get all the structure and everything when you process the cube that is the when it is going to use the fact tables and the dimension tables and it will perform all permutations and the combinations it's not going to get anything so the complete you know the the schema the logical view will be loaded to the cube here so cube is now a complete empty cube and the structure is however you are able to see here but only here the black and white screen is available but when you go to the cube you will be able to see blue and yellow that's it so when you see blue and yellow you are in the cube so when you double click on this you will not be able to get the blue and yellow here only that but when you create this you have only given the schema schema means these are the tables i am going to use and these are the relationship this is the primary keys and foreign keys all of them you will be able to tell so automatically below you have dimensions all the dimensions got added so these are the four dimensions got added so these are called database dimensions try to understand so database dimensions means whatever the dimensions you are able to see here so i have a dim customer dimension dim location dimension dim product dimension dim time dimension so these are called database dimension these are straight away linked in this so below cube whenever you use the cube automatically all the dimensions can come or you can also right click and you can also create a new dimensions first and later you should be able to create a cube that is also fine so when you go to the cube let me go to the cube and when you see here you are able to get all the measures okay and this is your cube structure and below you are able to get lots of dimensions so cube is going to have a measures and the cube is going to have a dimensions 
clear and these dimensions are known as you know cube dimensions and whatever you are able to see in the you know in the solution explorer so these dimensions are known as database dimensions when you go here and these are the database dimensions okay so when you go here and these are the cube dimensions so you should be able to understand these are the cube dimensions okay so these are cube dimensions these are cube measures and when you go to the solution explorer these are database dimensions okay so whenever you create the structure is created now let me go to the each and every database dimension and let me uh, check whether everything is perfectly created or not if you wanted to customize tomorrow dimensions and all you have to come here in customization because writing you know creating a good cube means creating good dimensions because the pillars of the cube is the properly built in or pro properly creating dimensions only remember so you can do lots of things in the dimensions and when you create properly dimensions the, that is called database dimensions automatically whatever the changes you do and process automatically all of them will get reflected here okay so creating a cube is very very important but before that you know you have to take each and every dimension and here you should be able to perform nicely configure lots of things over there okay let me take a dim product table dimension so this is the data source view we have and <clears throat> so we have a product name product price product category but as of now it has taken by default only the product key who has taken the cube the cube has taken only this and from the data source view that means from the data warehouse let me add remaining columns also like that you should be able to add remaining columns so product name you can have product price you can have you can have category so what is the meaning of this when you're doing like this and <clears throat> click ok when you're doing like this you are simply saying that from here I am I'm, I'm adding some more things to this because this is what is the you know database dimension whatever the columns we have those are here but unfortunately when we created a cube those remaining fields did not go to the cube you know or dimensions so we are adding them manually so you, you have to double click on this and when you go here you are able to add all of them but now every dimensions can have hierarchies that is what we had learned so take the you know or hierarchy we can create because we can have a category so below the category we can have a product name this is a category hierarchy or you can say product hierarchy so when you go and click twice you should be able to rename that so product hierarchy so always hierarchy should have you know uh, the highest you know the highest things should be first and the lower thing should be the later for example we have a country state city we have year semester quarter month so the higher thing should be the the smaller things are below the larger things are first so category name and you should be able to get the product name obviously that category could be furniture and below that you have to have tables and chairs and category is electronics below that you have to have the tvs and mobile phones and all of them like that you have a category name below that you should be able to get this so you will be getting some kind of a message saying that attribute relationship do not exist between one or more levels of the hierarchy this may result in you know uh, query performance this thing will we're going to come later and we're going to understand because when you go to the dimension structure next to that you have attribute relationships okay this i'm going to you know show because all these belong to the dim product dim only so you have this one and this one then you have a translation and you have a browser tab okay so all of them we're going to understand later but as of now you add this columns and using these columns you should be able to create a cube and save this and close okay so i have done it for dim product and you can do it for dim location also click on dim location and this is the data warehouse columns and these are the columns in the cube so by default when you take the wizard and perform it is not going to take all the columns by default so you have to add manually so let me take country and let me take city and let me take state so any 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 manner you can take first country city state however you wanted to have so these are the columns i have added and save it and 
using this columns you should be able to create a hierarchy because dimension tables will have hierarchies hierarchies are used to drill up drill up and drill down so let me take the highest level item is country and the next one is a state you have to insert below this okay in, inside this and you have to have city so country is the largest one then the the smallest then the smallest so let me go here and you should be able to rename or press f2 and let me say this is city hierarchy or country hierarchy like that you should be able to create hierarchies and every dimensions you know dim location dot dimensions you can perform this and you can perform this and you can perform translations and you can perform a browser what you wanted to browse all of them so as of now we did not you know process the cube nothing is visible here but let us you know our rest uh, uh, let us restrict to only the first window and save and click on ok and close this so so these two are over let me take dim customer and when i take a dim customer only one thing i have dim customer name and that's it i need not create a hierarchy because uh, nothing is there so simply save this and click on ok that's it so later you can also take the last one dim timetable and we have a lot many things are available here and but whatever you wanted to have you can have i would like to have year number i don't need the full date if you wanted to have full date you can also have that is nothing wrong within this so year number i can have semester number or i don't want to add this semester number i wanted to add my one semester number and quarter number and week number and i can have telugu english month name i can have a telugu month name whatever you have you have week number you have month number so you have day number so whatever you wanted to have you can have remaining things just leave it as it is and using this you should be able to create a hierarchy so let me take year number and within that i'll have semester number within the semester number you can have a quarter number and within the quarter number you can have you know a uh, uh, month number or month name whatever you wanted to have month number and after the month number if, if you wanted to have day number you can have like this so year semester quarter month day so this is one hierarchy right click on this and rename and say this is the uh, year year uh, complete analysis full hierarchy you can have so can i create one more hierarchy answer is yes i would like to create one more hierarchy year number you can drag and drop here and below that let me have a quarter number and below that i can have a week number so this is one more hierarchy i would like to create right click on this and rename this is a week okay hierarchy so wk something like this so one dimensions can have much more hierarchies or hierarchies you may not also have so you may have hierarchies may not have hierarchies or you may have one hierarchy or multiple hierarchies for the given dimensions so these are the things we have created as of now but let us understand remaining things later okay so every uh, dim time dot dim will have four windows one is a dimension structure attribute relationships translation and the browser so this the next windows we are going to see later so as of now the cube is properly created so once you create a cube then what we are going to do is that so the build cube is done and we had build dimensions and added remaining columns so also just now we had done it so once that is done the next number is that you have to create you know hierarchies and everything so that is also we have done and lot more other things you should be able to do at the dimension level so those are the things we're going to learn slowly but as of now we had created a cube with few dimensions and a few things and later let us go into process and deploy the cube okay so when you process and deploy the cube when you go to our diagram so this cube is going to get this data and uh, with the data source data source view it is going to create a let us say one uh, sales cube okay it is going to create a sales cube here and now this cube data it is going to get the data it is going to get the 
it is going to create a logical tables first and after that it is going to aggregate the data and put the data now the question is that where should i put the data so i am going to aggregate all of them right so aggregations can done aggregations nothing but a process so after processing the cube what we have to do all the aggregated data we should be able to store in the database now we have to create one more database this is what is called cube database cube db and this database will be available in your you know sql server and for the second fellow the you know, the down also we have a cube for the is also you have to create one more database and this database is known as a cube database okay so let us understand so we have this is also database oltp and data warehouse is also database but these are two dimensional databases and these are also databases but these are multi dimensional databases try to understand so you are going to get the data and you are going to keep all the centralized uh, big database and here you are going to store all historical data but you read the data so you are going to process the data for the processing purpose uh, it is going to use a queue but after processing is done what we have to do we have to transfer the aggregated data permanently to somewhere so permanently means it has to you know either today or tomorrow the aggregated data has to be there for example i have a 10 here and i have a 20 i have a 20 here i have a 30 okay what is the total the total is 60 the 60 is going to be processed but after that the processed data the 60 will get moved to this database okay so tomorrow the project is going to create your schemas and create a cube and the next then the, the output of the cube is your the cube database that's it so in the cube database is going to have all the dimension structures and the factor table structures and all the data process data will get you know loaded to the cube database so whenever you're executing a cube means you're processing the cube means it's going to go read the data process the data the process data once it is processed is going to deploy it to the cube database so where is cube database this cube database available in sql server and these are two dimensional databases rows and columns two dimensional dbs these are this is two dimensional db and this is also two dimensional dbs because rows and columns only we can keep and this is this database is known as a multi dimensional database okay so remember so this database oltp database and we're talking about data warehouse database are normal databases and where we should be able to write normal queries but this database we're talking about you know these databases completely these are completely what kind of databases multi dimensional databases and these are not same as you know oltp and data warehouse remember this so these are this is something different and this is something different try to understand and the cube database is also database this is going to have aggregated data and this database we have to create inside the sql server and whenever you process the cube so let me go here and to create the multi-dimensional database, go to the Solution Explorer, right click on this properties. When you go to the properties, click on deployment and here the server name it is telling what is the server name in which I should be able to create. We know that we can put a dot or you can put your server name. So what is the name of the database? By default, the project name will be this, but you can modify the name. So I can say products so amazon so say amazon cube db okay amazon products cube db so or you can say amazon sales cube db amazon product sales cube db so this is the database it's going to be created and click on apply and click on okay so save now we had created a data source and the data source view. The last step is that we have to create a, you know, the database in the SQL server and process and deploy the queue. So let us see the steps once again. So we had built the data warehouse. 
then later create a project, then data source, then you have to create a data source view. Then inside that we had created lot many things and we have to build that cube. And when you build the cube automatically we will have build dimensions and here we had added remaining columns and everything here. Then we had created hierarchies and the next up process the cube and deploy the cube. When you process the cube what is going to happen uh, it is going to deploy all the you know uh, tables first because if I wanted to store the data I wanted to create a blank table right so create a table then you insert the data like that if I wanted to store aggregated data so process means it's going to aggregate all permutations and combinations but the data I wanted to deploy to the cube database okay so before deploying what it will going to do it will create a blank tables so deploying means that is a thing so processing means what processing means going to aggregate the data whatever the process data the data is going to push to the the deployed structure okay so process and deploy so when you process the cube automatically the blank tables will be deployed to the cube database so here we're talking about so this is the database blank tables are created when you process the cube the aggregated data pushed to those blank tables and you're, you're going to get all the data from here so tomorrow if you wanted to write mdx queries and all you have to use them this and you should be able to write mdx queries using these databases only and tomorrow if you wanted to create reports and all you have to use these databases only so using mdx and tomorrow you have to create ssrs reports okay so ssrs is going to be linked to this, this database okay so once you create a cube and deploy this cube to the production what is that we have to do only simple thing is that you have to just change the data warehouse connection now i am using my server as a connection here so everything else remains the same tomorrow when we deploy the cube to the production just go to the cube database or the data source level you have to just you know uh, give the link to the production data warehouse okay when you give the link to the production data warehouse it is going to take all the data from there and it is going to get and it is going to process and the cube database will be created that's it so deployment is very very simple here only thing is that's the same the cube you know uh, the schema or the script of the for the cube you have to give the cube is going to have the data source the data source you have to change it to the production data source the cube is going to get the all the data from the production and it is going to push aggregate the data push the data to the cube database so, so whenever you're give, giving a cube means you cube is not going to have any data try to understand the cube is having only logical structure so this structure is going to have so when you right click on this and when you process the cube this process is going to the, is going to process all the data from the dimensional table and packet tables the data is loaded to the cube database now cube is not going to have anything here in SCS. so cube is a processor cube is an engineer so try to understand so tomorrow what we have to give we have to generate a script for the cube and we are going to give so when you give the script and cube is only it can process so when you were creating a script for the cube means cube is not going to store any data i told you cube is a it is process it is logical structure is going to store when you process it's going to go to the data source get the data dump the data here so you be just like a motor or an engine okay it has to consume some data and do the process and output is going to throw to somewhere so when you're going to give tomorrow a cube script and you're giving only the structure of the cube and when you give the connection to the new data warehouse as this and give the connection to the database automatically cube is going to process the you know or data taken from data warehouse and you're going to push so by default cube is not storing this cube is not going to store any data in this so let us understand all the data will be here and you can also take database however you're taking the database to OLTP or data warehouse and when you have this you should be able to perform MDX queries and do lots of things there understand so cube is completely having a logical structure and the cube is not having any data so right click on this so we have a process and we have a deploy so when you deploy what is going to happen the blank tables are deployed in, in our database where is our database we know that this is my database now 
when you deploy first the blank tables but when you process it is also first you know create a blank tables the deployment process can happen then process is going to happen then it will push all the aggregate let us process or you can also put deploy whatever you need so when you choose deploy deploy started and deploying and processing and you may get some kind of errors here deployment completed successfully deploying means it is created a blank tables in this try to understand it's created a blank tables and next you have to process process means you take the raw data and it's going to aggregate the data and it's going to go here and close this window okay if you if you don't perform this also fine directly you can just go to the process when you taking the process and here we have three kinds of things so database it's going to take process full we have and the process clear and the process default process full means all the data i have 10 20 30 I have all the data it is going to take and all the data it is going to push but before aggregating so it is deleting all the data from here so all the data is taken and aggregated and push so it is nothing but truncation and loading of the data so truncation and loading of the data so that is what is called full all the data it's going to aggregate and push it here and when you have a you know process default process default means incremental aggregations incremental aggregations means for example now we have 10 20 30 is there in the data warehouse <clears throat> this is the data okay so now in the cube database you have aggregated the data cube is storing the total is 60 and tomorrow because of etl you may add one new value that is six now what i'm going to perform when i use this option process default it is going to take whatever the data you have 60 and 60 plus it is going to put 66 here because all the aggregated data i have that is 60 60 plus 60 that is what is called you know default uh, uh, process default this is increment uh, aggregations but if you say process full here process full here if you load some to forex tomorrow you load some data say four now what is going to take it will remove this data and it will take all the million data again it is going to aggregate 10 plus 20 20 20 plus 30 blah 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 and this is a time consuming process and it will give you 70. so the process full once in a while you can have because process full is going to take lots of time because it is going to start from the scratch but when you say process default what is going to happen i have the aggregation is 70 if i get one five here and this is going to take the aggregated data plus it is going to add five to this so it will be 75 it's very easy but when you say the last one is a process clear it is simply a deleting so everything will be deleted here that's it no nothing will be available so you will not be able to analyze anything from the cube because the cube database is truncated so process clear means a truncate all the data from the cube database that is the meaning okay so let me put process full that is the first time we are doing it and click on run and it is going to take all you know whatever the schema it is created so all the fact tables dimension tables you have you have a primary key and foreign key it is going to make all the relationships and get and dump the data from each and every table so it is taking to process this cube so processing if you know fact table first and 33 rows have been added to the you know this table and time is this much time <laughs> then it's uh, taken this and process the attribute all process the keys and you have it has processed this and 61 rows have been added now when you see what kind of a query it is doing all of them you should be able to understand and the queries also it can give you it is taking all the data says so select distinct data only it is taking and dumping it here and so here also you can say select a distinct customer key it is going to take distinct values only it is going to take and dump into the cube database so like that all the things including fact table dimension table everything is added now you should be able to say close and click on close now we are done so once you run with the cube once you're done with the cube the next one is that i wanted to read the data from the cube from for reading the data 
So browsing the cube data. So whether all the aggregations are done properly or not, you should be able to just go to the cube database and double click on the cube. When you're in blue and yellow, you know that you're in uh, cube only. So when you come here to the corner, you have a browser where you should be able to get all the data and where you have, you know, the dimension table, location table, and you have your measures. Okay. So I wanted to see what is the total quantity sold here. The total quantity sold is this drag and drop something here. And I wanted to have customer wise, so drag and drop the customer name. So these customers have bought these many, you know, products. And if you wanted to get the year wise sale date, we have year number, drag and drop the sale date here automatically. So these are the customer names, this is the data. So this is very easy. So tomorrow I remove this. I wanted to get, go up and I wanted to get say, a sales amount and sales quantity. But I wanted to have, you know, a, a year hierarchy wise. So when you drag and drop this year wise, semester wise, quarter wise, month wise, day wise, sales amount and sales quantity. So in 2012 and day three, day five, the sales has happened, dates these are, okay? Or if you wanted to, you know, clear this data and do some kind of analysis. Now we are not writing any queries, remember like this. And we are only dragging and dropping. The customer can get any kind of a report like this and just clear grid. So this is how the people can do it. Sales amount for the country wise. Uh, let me go to the country table. We have a location table here. I can have country wise like this. Or I need, you know, state wise. Or I need the city wise. So you, you have to drag and drop one by one here. And you should be able to understand and where the, the sales is happened. Okay, and tomorrow I wanted to know, I wanted to write some MDX queries like that, which is the city which is, you know, having, you know, highest sales. So that it is not going to give you, okay. But you should be able to analyze data like this, but I wanted to have, which is the city or which is the state or which is the country or which is the city, which is the state is, you know, performing highest sales in last 2012 and 2013. So if you want to get that kind of a, you know, reports and you should be able to get. So whenever you, perform this kind of a things automatically uh, the MDX queries are written internally so that you know do not worry as of now so enjoy the so when you drag, drag and drop city hierarchy you will be able to get each and everything here so these are attributes and these are hierarchies attributes means columns so if you need column by column analysis you can do attribute wise or you can simply drag and drop a hierarchy and you should be able to do it so this is how you should be able to do it. If I need year wise, so go here, so get the year. And you will not be able to get the data until and unless you drag and drop one uh, measure. Okay, year wise. And I need product wise. Okay, I need country wise or city wise. I wanted to have a sales. Now see, so this, this is how you are going to have I need year wise, product name wise, city wise, blah, blah, blah. But if you need the same kind of a quantity sold and the sales amount also, simply dropping and dropping and sales count also if you wanted to have, I, I have only one guy is there. So let me remove, it doesn't make any sense. So like that, if you wanted to have something without writing any query, you are able to get the data. But if you have a data warehouse and if you wanted to get the same kind of a report, you have to join the table so you have to join so what is that i need year wise product name by city wise right so first i have the data so i have to say as a join so this data we're able to get this data because fact tables as having then year wise means i have to join with dim time dim time as b on a dot you know, sale date key equals to sale date key equals to, you know, uh, B on you have uh, date key. Okay, I have joined these two tables. So I can get year. So year is available in this and you should be able to get the year wise and everything. So 
but I need year wise and product name wise also. You have to join one more table. So join dim dot product. So as C and on a dot product key equals to C dot product key. You have joined so that you should be able to get uh, the product name, the pen and everything here because again I need the city. So if I need the city, I have to join one more table. So join dim time dot location and as I say D and on D dot location key equals to and you have a fact table is the link to each and everything. So A dot you know location key and this is also added. Now what all you need? You need year number. So say year number and what is that product name okay then you have a city then you have to put sum of sales sales amount as you know sales amount comma sum of you know uh, sales quantity or quantity sold okay so this is a completely a big thing that you have to understand and it is not going to work because when you have aggregate function whatever the columns we have all of them have to be there in the group by clause okay now let us aggregate the data and see now 2012 and 9873 when you go here and 2012 and for which product and for fair and lovely Bangalore and uh, this is a sales 543015 543015 so you have to write the logic for that you have to scratch your head and you are lucky when you have three to four dimensional tables you are unlucky when you have 500 dimensional tables and if you have very little data this when you execute this and is going to get the data within fraction of seconds but you're unlucky when you have millions of the data when you're executing the query it is going to you know it will take a lot of time and perform the aggregations on the fly so instead of writing queries and clicking on execute and whenever you keep this query inside a report and this is a useless query because tomorrow you have to write this complex queries and you have to aggregate the data it will become useless to you so without doing anything you should be able to already aggregated data is available and you should be able to just get the data and showcase it so you need not you know think about joints and all we are not joining anywhere we are not performing any any kind of a grouping and we are not doing anything simply dragging and dropping so automatically the data is aggregated aggregated means what is happened the grouping and everything would have been happened internally so that we are not doing so everything is happened at the time of <coughs> you know uh, uh, processing the cube only so this is the big circus can be avoided at the time of creating a cube and all so this is what you have to understand when you get the new data and that time just simply go here and right click on this you have to again process the cube when you again process the cube what is going to happen is that whatever the data it got you know add loaded to the data warehouse with the help of ETL only that data numbers will change in the cube otherwise these numbers will not change even though the data warehouse is changed with the new data but until and unless if you don't process the data you don't get the new aggregations and all try to understand that okay so cube is going to be you know processed whenever you're getting the data in the queue uh, in the data warehouse a fresh data comes after the after one or two days you're going to process the cube and the cube is going to take lots of time to process the data when you have large amount of data it may take one or two or three hours four hours depends upon your data so these are the things you have to understand and this is how you as a developer you are able to dip but now the end user is not going to have ssas installed in his machine so end user is going to browse the cube with the help of with the help of excel sheets so this is where the end user is going to get everything so he has to go to the excel sheet and go to data menu and from other sources and here we are going to go to the from analysis services and go here 
and click on this and server name is dot and click next and what database you wanted to have yesterday we had created one and today we have created one and you can choose what database you wanted to have let me have amazon products db just now we have created click next and click finish and the end user he has to get only this information if you educate him for a one minute if you educate him for a one minute her, her for one minute and they're able to get all the data we have columns and rows columns means the data will come like this rows means you'll get like this so when you double click on this we'll get this window so all the dimensional table fact tables everything will be here with the hierarchies and everything so you have a fact table and you have all dimensional tables are here and when you see we had only one dim time table but when you see you have a delivery date is separated and sale date is separated here also but we had only one dim time that is missing now so it has created a delivery date and created one more table called sale date i told you one you know table uh, one table is playing a role play dimension dim time table because of two links it has created two separate dim dimension tables here that you have to understand dim time table is disappeared so when you go to this cube we are able to get two right so because of this and this table is acting as a sale date and this is acting as a delivery date delivery date and we have a sale date so it has taken the same table and it is creating for example in movies when you have a single hero has to perform two roles one is a john and one is a james so and you will see the same table as a john and you will see same table as a james think like that so it is not the original name will be hidden and the, you will be getting the uh, the alias name that is james and this one so these are the things it got added so that you have to understand here okay so this is what is called a dim time table this is the database dimensions as i told you already but when you have the you know cube cube is going to have different dimensions here and those dimensions are here okay now so how the excel user is going to connect so columns and rows and sigma sigma means factor values aggregations values and the report filter means you can filter the data so i wanted to uh, put something for example product name when you go product hierarchy is shown and more fields and product name columns you will get everything in the columns i i need this in rows you will get everything in the rows i need go up and i wanted to go and expand this and sales amount okay that's it so you will be able to get like this i need for the country wise so country where is the country here the country is available here in this location so you should be able to go to the cities hierarchy or you can have a single field if you need take the country here and the columns so in the india and this one you should be able to get and now you're able to understand everything is properly aligned okay and if you wanted to create a nice report you should be able to create and this is the sales in india this is the sales in us and total sales and the grand total sales for all the countries and it is india sales grand totals so everything is going to you know give it to you so these are when you double click on this you will get this again so like that whatever you wanted to have you should simply play for example i need uh, you know year wise so drag and drop the sale date you have year and more columns are there and i wanted to have uh, here so in 2012 and 2013 and i wanted to have you know location wise also location i wanted to have let us say city wise so like that you can have so year wise then within that you have a location then year 2012 total then th 2013 you have all these countries and you have 2013 total it is giving you these totals at the end it is also going to give you the grand total so it is giving you the totals for each and every year what is the country in the city has happened and where the city did not take where the sales did not take place for which products so like that you should be able to do any kind of analysis by the customer customer is happy he is not going to do any kind of a uh, uh, the technical stuff is simply connecting to the cube and doing so for example you wanted to analyze <clears throat> okay so this is my data but i wanted to get sales only to year 2012 
okay city wise product name wise i have but i wanted to get sales happened say let me take sale date key I wanted to have the filter. Filter means where clause, slicing and dicing. So this is how you have to slicing and that data and the grouping. Dicing means grouping. So slicing of the data. When you drag and drop here, you got the year number. And when you go, so it is says select multiple items. So click on this. So all of the years have been checked, uncheck and check only one year. So let me put only 2014. So this is a sales app and so you can also put whatever the clause you wanted to have you can have this here so let me put and give 14 and 16 like that you can have whatever you wanted to have or tomorrow I wanted to have for the country wise so let me put some more things here and they can also have quantity sold so you have sales amount and quantity sold for the Bangalore city or you can take country or you can take complete you know city hierarchy city hierarchy also we can have it here so when you go here you should be able to get a drill down approach india wise karnataka bangalore then this is one thing and total and us and like that you should be able to get this kind of a nice drill down reports you should be able to get with the plus symbols and all okay so all of them are very much important so if you wanted to filter something you should be able to filter it here and whatever the you know things you wanted to have you can have it here so simply go to that field and put it here and you should be able to get okay so whatever you wanted to have you should be able to have for example i wanted to have the country as a filter and i wanted to take uh, sales amount so i wanted to know only what is the sales happened in so there is a extra comma is here so i think the data was wrong okay we have to remove this comma somewhere it is added this also so this is the sales in india and this is the sales because when you get some wrong values it is grouping like this okay so like this you should be able to get the data so this is the data you're able to understand you this is the data you're able to modify it okay so the people can simply analyze the data then they they simply disconnect and they can also connect so this is how the people can browse the cube data and use the data and we can also create ssrs reports with the help of using the cube database okay so where is the cube database the cube database is here so when you go to the sql server and this is your sql server and below this gather this is oltp database and data warehouse databases and click on connect and you have to click on analysis services and connect to the dot or gather and connect and here we are able to create this database yesterday and this is the database we have created today okay if you wanted to delete this database simply go here and delete this database or you can also take backup and lot of things you can do so if you wanted to tomorrow take this backup and analyze the cube here you should be able to analyze the cube here and this is where this is the multi-dimensional database and these are two dimensional databases in this we have to use joins and all right the queries and if you wanted to get the data from this database and here you should be able to write a query and these are you know mdx queries you should be able to write on the cube databases and you can disconnect from here so we're going to learn cube databases and uh, the mdx queries and everything from tomorrow and these are the things you have to understand to create a you know again the cube and everything clear guys any questions you have oh uh, i'm okay with this thing but i don't know how to rectify my problem 